the recording's in progress. <laughs> so I, clearly, I'm feeling a little silly. What's new? So, um, along with feeling silly, I tend to have a curiosity that's pretty pervasive about spirituality and and really experiencing and living the magical within the mundane, the extraordinary within the ordinary. And I find myself, contrary to what this tradition teaches, I find myself um, thinking I need to, to move beyond this or you know, go to a retreat or um, I don't know, have some sort of some sort of magic wand on me and like suddenly I'm spiritual and <laughs> awake or um, and it's it's this is a little bit subconscious, it's a little bit unconscious because you know consciously um, I know that the, the the transcendent reality is within this moment and it's really up to me or it's up to us to bring the extraordinary into the ordinary. Through all the things, our practice to, to remembering to coming into this, this moment and this, this body, which is truly extraordinary. Um, and then also for me, I don't know if it's for you, but remembering um, to connect into um, something bigger, right? A bigger aspect of myself and let that come through my actions and I mean, you all know I'm a mom through my words and um, not snap at my kiddo even when I'm frustrated or we're running late or you know my loved ones. And so it's a practice just like this is. And our practice today is about moving into the um, transcendent place of ourselves, if you will, because it's available here and now. It's in this moment. It's not another place. We're not trying to um, move beyond this experience, even though I told you that some of my subconscious patterns are to think that in order to um, live my extraordinary life, I need to go beyond this. I, that's not truth, okay? It's right here and right now. And part of the way that I connected to when I am adult enough and come into my, my practice is, is by tapping into the back body. So last week we did a ton of back body practice and today we'll practice in with these loops that we, we call in Anasara Yoga the shoulder loop and the kidney loop. And we'll define what that is here as we go. But the, the point of this is that they move us into our back body the back body represents the unknown, the mystery, the extraordinary, the transcendence in the here and now. So as you are here now for a few more moments, feeling your breath, feeling the entirety of you right now. So the awareness is probably more um, awake, attuned, able to map your front body <coughs> more than your back body. And just notice if that's true for you. So as you sense into front body and back body, notice that you have more ability to perceive or intercept. Feeling your breath, and you know, we notice things perhaps not with judgment, but just noticing that most of us are going to have a little more kind of colorful uh, or attuned awareness to the front body because it's what we see and because our exteroceptors, our sense organs, are on the front body. Lunging. 
I invite you to bring your hands in front of your heart. Representation of our individual self, our unique, all that makes us unique individual. The back body, it feeds us, it feeds, we want to open to it being our front body. So as you breathe in the next time, take the invitation to lengthen upward a little bit more into toward your shoulders. You feel a little stronger in the position a little more And then press your palate back in space a bit. And as you go from front body to back body, notice perhaps a little more tone in the neck and in the shoulders. And then as you feel the energy moving down from the palate, through neck, through shoulders, notice how then at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades, the energy moves an elevated heart. Remembrance of your fully connected self. You can enjoy any sound on the A deep breath in. Now witness, as you bow your head to your heart, feel the skin of your back waist sliding up, up toward the base, back ribs, maybe even up into the lower back ribs. Feel how with your heart bowed like this, that the space on the front body is perhaps more uh, condensed as the back body expands. And as the back waist expands, this is part of what we'll tap into today as well, the kidney region. It has a sense of humility, the back body full like this. And release your hands to open your eyes and your knees. Come to your hands and your knees. So extraordinary within the ordinary. With your exhale, puff into your kidneys as your head and your tail go down. So the kidneys are uh, above the back knees. As you breathe in, draw your palate back, lifting your head up, feeling the heart coming forward. As you exhale, puff into your kidneys as the head and tail go down. And same thing, breathing in, feel the initiation of this cow pose from the palate, the roof of the mouth, exhaling. And breathing in. So the majority of our Curious investigation of front body to back body of the sublime within this perhaps mundane experience it is here in this front to back plane, the sagittal plane movement. Going back to a neutral spine, bring your big toes together for child's pose, that way, your knees wide, reach your hips back and soften your head down and breathe in and breathe out feeling as you breathe in perhaps a capacity to widen and spread into your back waist and again this is this is where kidneys uh, reside and they're they're as you know they're water balloons 
but they have a buoyant quality to them. As you breathe in the next time, come on up to hands and knees, and back you go into downward facing dog. And you can paddle through your feet if you like, feeling into allowing yourself to take in the language of your body right now. Breath is flowing in, and breath is flowing out. Take some steps to the front of your mat, coming to a standing forward bend. You can, of course, jump if you're in that mode right now. As you breathe in, lift halfway up into Ardha Uttanasana, and as you exhale, hold. And as you breathe in, come all the way up. Stretch through your edges. Breaking up some space. Exhale, slide the hands to the heart. Breathing in, lifting the heart. Slide the palate back in space a little bit and just feel how that moving to the back body kind of opens the heart a bit. Next breath in, bend knees, lift upper body to Utkatasana. And as you exhale, hold forward, Uttanasana. As you breathe in, half lift. And as you exhale, hold and bow, breathing in, step left leg back into long lunge, staying there as you exhale. Another full breath in. And exhale back to downward facing dog. We'll just breathe in to come forward to plank and then just checking into plank, drawing a line of awareness from the navel up to the back waist. So we're moving to the back body. Yeah, good, Cindy. Draw a line of awareness from the palate up. So again, moving to the back body. Same with breath. Wait for an exhale to press back to downward dog. With an in-breath, lift and extend left leg. With an exhale, step left leg forward. Staying here for breath in and exhale. Another breath in and exhale to step forward. Notice the opening occurring already in your amazing body. As we pause, take witness of the extraordinary uh, ability for the body to already find more comfort and ease after a few poses. And as you breathe in the next time, come on up, stretch your arms up. And exhale, hands to heart. Bend knees again. Just touch the floor for a moment. Yes, you can lay down. And then lift upper body up, Utkatasana. Next exhale, hold and bow. This time, step right leg back into lunge. Next exhale, lower right knee down to the ground. Rise up to a low Anjali Asana. You can stretch your arms up and just feel it where uh, awareness is and invite awareness to slide from the navel back and from the palate back. We'll refine these loops here in a bit, but just starting with that, moving into back body. Next exhale, reach forward, place hands down, lift back knees, step back to plank. So navel <clears throat> sliding to back waist, palate sliding to back of skull. Keep that lower down. Stretch your toes. Palate initiates. Palate slides back to come into cobra. Isn't that amazing? So move to the back body. And then the shoulder blades go down. Pack them down your back. Next exhale, come on down and press back to downward facing dog. You then lift your uh, what would be the right leg up, is that right? Is that right? and then step right leg forward. As you exhale, lower left knee down and rise up. Yeah. 
So we're just tracing these lines of energy, collaborating with the flow of nature, stepping into the flow. That's Anusara means stepping into the flow. So we're drawing the waistline back, and then even getting a lift of the kidneys up. We're drawing the palate back, and even getting a descent of the shoulder blades down. Next, exhale, reach forward, place hands down, lift back knee, step forward, Ujjhasana, bending knees, lift upper body up. And as you breathe in, the next time, rise up, and hands to heart. Grab your strap and put the strap. At the bottom tips of the shoulder blades, with the strap even on, on both sides of you, then you're gonna loop the straps over your shoulders. Yep, crisscross them, cross your heart on the back. <laughs> and then the, these, these straps come forward. One. Two, yep, there you go, three. Suddenly you've got a jet pack. <laughs> okay, so if you and just keep breathing and then you, you pull on your jet pack. Now, we, all of us in this class, we know how to integrate from the hands into the shoulders. We already know muscle energy, so that's a prerequisite here, as well as keeping your side bodies long. So as you pull on the jet pack, See how the palate slides back? Yeah, so palate sliding back, bottom tips of shoulder blades come forward, piercing the heart forward, opening up the front body. We initiate from palate going back to open the front. So it's our shoulder loop. We, we know this, but let's play with it. Take a deep breath in with your exhale, which katasana. Of course, the shape is a little bit different, but you got to have your little jet pack pulling. <laughs> nice. Exhale, release. We're going to keep the jet pack on, which is my word for the strap ensemble. And then step the left leg back into its lunge. Lift the upper body up so you're in a high on the asana. And we grab the, this ensemble again, these straps again. Okay, so feeling your breath. Expand internally, pull on the strap as you draw the palate back. Yeah, amazing. Isn't that fun? <laughs> uh, okay, yes, Misha thinks it's fun. Okay, so the little things, right? People fascinated by the little things. And as you exhale, we're going to step it forward and then just step the right leg back. So tapping into this mechanism of Flowing your palate to the back body to open the front body. So this play of going back, going into the mystery, going into the universally connected to expand to the front body, bringing that transcendent into this moment. And as you um, exhale, step forward and rise up. And release your strapage all the way down. With Katasana, as you are ready, once you are liberated from the strap, as you exhale, fold forward. And let's step left leg back, swivel the back heel down for a warrior one type of stance. So the back toes are pointed forward at about 10 to 15 degrees. And then squeeze your knees together to push your thighs back toward a parjotanasana. So moving the front leg towards straight. Breath by breath here. Go ahead and bend into your front knee again. And stretch your front leg towards straight. Roll all the way straight. Feeling your breath. This amazing body, please allow yourself to be exhilarated by this experience of being in your body, then bend into your front knee and lift your upper body up to your adjustment one, warrior one. So we stretch our arms up, 
Keep powering from pelvis through the back leg. Now arms are up, but we still lift up through the ribs, pal it back. And then you have to kind of recreate that feeling of pulling on your jet pack. As the palate goes back, the heart opens. That's what we call the shoulder loop. Let's take two or three more breaths. Super good. Yeah, just squeeze those triceps in. Oh, there's some resistance. Good for you. And everybody, as you exhale, reach forward, place your hands down. Lift your back heel. Step back to plank pose. So the, the shoulder loop, not as uh, exaggerated here, but it's still here. Palette presses to back body. Next exhale, lower. Come on down. Stretch your toes. Palette pulls back. You. The, the straps are like little fairies, little teaching tools. Visualize the straps still on, and your fairy friends pulling those straps forward right at the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Next exhale, lower down, press back to downward facing dog. And as you breathe in the next time, lift your left leg up. And as you exhale, step the left leg forward. Swivel the back heel down. And breath by breath, press your thighs back. Moving the front leg more towards straight. That's it, Meg. And then you bend. We really do this two times, but I give you a little more than one breath in each stance, I believe. So we make this similar on both sides to then bend into the front knee. Keep powering from your pelvis down through your back leg to lift your upper body and rise up to your warrior one. <laughs> the first warrior pose. Excellent. You're nice in the hips and the back leg, back body. So you might notice if you just, if you're not integrated, uh, if you just drop your palate back, it doesn't do anything for the, the shoulder loop. Yeah, exactly. Cindy. So you've got to expand inside and you have to have muscle energy. So then when you press your palate back, you feel energy going down your back, down your shoulders, and at the bottom just the shoulder blades pressing forward, up. Excellent, next exhale, reach forward, lift your back heel, step back to plank, and lower, cobra. And so we're moving from the individual self into the mystery, into the back body through the palate, and from the back body at the bottom to the shoulder blades from the transcendent into the here and now, opening the heart. Next exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Lift right leg up and exhale, right leg forward. Swivel left heel down. And now we'll come into warrior two stance. So cartwheel your arms up. Excellent. It's, it's, Often, yeah, good job, everyone. So squeeze legs together as you exhale, keeping that press inner thighs back. As you breathe in, good, exhale. Carve outer right hip down and under. That's excellent, Sarah. That, that like that, Meg, and that's a strong action for you. And everybody keep breathing, Meg, like mad. Maybe not like mad, but uh, strongly. Pull your outer right hip down and under. Yeah, like that. Exactly. So you feel that lift at the front of your belly. And then we're just gonna go, we're gonna go back to reverse wire. And up and over to side angle pose. Any version of side angle pose. As you exhale, draw your navel back. Keeping that, draw your palate back. And next exhale, bring your hands down, lift your back heel, step back to downward dog. Breathe in to lift your left leg up and exhale, step left leg forward. Back heel down, cartwheel up, wire two, second wire pose. Yeah, yeah, Meg. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's, 
you know, the jargon of outer spiral, the outer head going down, belly rising up. Um, very good. So on this side, start to take a little more awareness into as you exhale, navel flows back. Navel flows back and then lifts up the back waist and back ribs all the way to the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. That's part of the kidney loop. Now stretch from the kidneys rising up and out through your baby fingers like you sprouting kidney wings. If nothing else, it's pretty fun, right? To be that connected to the back and body, right? Okay, now reach uh, to your reverse wire pose. And next breath in, come up and side angle, keeping waistline flowing back, back ribs rising, palate goes back. Yeah, exhale, place hands down, lift back, heel up. Step forward, standing forward bend. Utkatasana, bend knees, lift upper body up, and breathe into rise up. Exhale, arms come down. Grab your waist. <laughs> yeah, and thumbs on the back, and then slide your hands up more so that you can actually lift your back ribs up. Now, as you lift your back ribs up, to really feel this, you have to bow your head forward. You have to let that shoulder loop go. And then I think you can feel how then the waistline literally does go back. The back ribs lift up. Then at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades, the, the, the energy comes forward. So from the mystery to the known, and then down the front and back in, into the navel. And that's what we call this a loop, right? Because it's looping like this. Now, we're going to shoulder loop on top of that. So the palate rises, the palate presses back, bottom tips of shoulder blades go down and forward, piercing forward through the heart without compressing the kidneys. So it's a dance, it's a play, breath by breath. And we continue to play. Grab your strap again, and we make a loop um, by threading the tail underneath both of the D-rings. We make a pretty small uh, loop, uh, five or so inches, and then the tail comes over the first D-ring and under the second. If I don't go through that, Inevitably, someone in class is like, <laughs> I'm single, but okay. So now we're going to come into warrior one with the right leg forward, but it's a little funny because we're actually going to bring that loop to the left foot first, then finagle yourself into warrior one with the right leg forward. And then we have this loop connected to the back foot. Yeah, great. So now we're gonna get into the kidneys. So it's like you pull on the strap and bow forward so much that your waistline flows back, 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 back. Now, keeping that, you're gonna literally let go of the strap, but you're gonna keep that lift of the kidneys up the back and shoulder loop on top of that. So palate rises, palate slides back, breath by breath. Bottom tips of shoulder blades pierce the heart without popping the bubble of the kidney fullness. <laughs> it's hopefully fun. One more deep breath. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart and step forward or back, whatever makes sense to you to switch sides. So our little little friends. So some of us, um, myself, Meg, Chino, and even Sarah, but not Sandy, <laughs> have a tendency to open the heart, open the heart, open the heart, open the heart, and then lose the kidneys, right? That's just a little bit of uh, our tendencies in, in large, largely for this group. 
So we're pulling on this strap to draw the waistline from the front to the back. We're going into the unknown where we're nothing other than connected, perfect, whole and complete, because of course we're that in our bodies, even though we don't recognize it a lot of times. Then keep that fullness of the back waist, fullness of the back ribs, release the strap, shoulder loop on top of that, the head rises, palate pulls back, and you draw the shoulder blades, breath by breath, into the heart to also lift the heart. It's a back bend, keeping the fullness of the back waist. It's excellent, Sarah. <laughs> and everybody, bring your hands to your heart and step forward and shake yourself free of the strap or, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> Breathe in, you can toss the mat and exhale to fold forward and step left leg back lower the left knee down to the floor. We'll take a quad opener here. So any version, um, no, I'm gonna say same hand as foot. <laughs> That's me, spontaneity, same hand as foot. And then you, I think most of us can lift the upper body up. And as we breathe, yeah. It's a dance, it's a, there's a spanda, this vibration, a play of, of Lila. So we draw from the front waist toward the back waist. We keep that. We draw from the palate back. And we keep that. And we draw from the belly button back. We draw from the palate back. We exhale the belly button back. Bring in the power back. If you like, you can stretch right arm up. We feel in this, this kidney looping and being spacious in the back body in this place where we're super connected to all that is source, flow, the hridaya, the heart. We also open our physical heart and exhale to release down. This time, just go back to downward facing dog. Notice right leg to left leg. So we do brain training, nervous system training. You feel that there's a difference, hopefully, more comfort or ease in the left side. And step. Left leg forward, lower the back knee down. Quad stretch, other side. Quad stretch with spirit. Okay, so <laughs> know, really just, she loves to crack us all up. But so seriously, though, it's like this is where we're practicing. Okay, how do I experience uh, something? extraordinary within this perhaps mundane thing. Uh, part of its remembrance. So the back body represents the extraordinary reality of all that is, including you. So I move the navel back. And as you move the navel back, you might notice, well, that's using my abdominals. And it is. And it's more. As we fill into the kidneys and mobilize into the kidneys, we start to feel them uh, as, as them, as kidneys. And that they have an ability and an expression to rise up the back body too. Keeping that palate moves back. Shoulder blades, uh, the arm bones move back with the palate. The shoulder blades go down and forward. They pierce forward at the bottom of the sternum coming forward. And exhale to release down and go back to downward facing dog. Noticing your self talk, how you are with yourself. So you know that they say like 95% of the time, uh, 
we're operating on unconscious programming <laughs> and it's usually not super positive and um the brain's always listening so <laughs> so in these moments in this practice we, we sit and we notice ourselves talking we say good things to ourselves we say positive things to ourselves and our body as practice of course we're practicing epigenetics here it's that simple okay come forward to plank pose and lower all the way down and <clears throat> Float your kidneys. Yeah, see? Like, <laughs> and and in like that cue, it's like probably you didn't know how to do that at the beginner. So just congratulate yourself. Keeping your kidneys floating, shoulder move. So palate moves up and back, integrated with the shoulders and the upper arm bones, bottom tips of shoulder blades, they do push forward. And feel into this. You can back bend and keep fullness of the kidneys. I think that sometimes maybe we think we can't. We can exhale to lower down and press back to downward facing dog. Follow your next exhale to please lower your knees to the floor, lower your elbows and your forearms to the floor, and take a moment to stretch your armpits forward and then integrate your arm bones into your shoulder sockets. Maintain that and lift your knees and your hips to dolphin pose. And walk your feet forward any amount. So this is a pose that I think really teaches us a lot. Notice what teachings are available to you right now. It's amazing. So good. And feel that, so we do want to bring that the palate slightly forward. Uh, that's it, she how good. And then she how you can even draw the waistline back a little bit more. See, if you like, you can lift your right leg up. And then you can either lift the other leg up or switch sides. And you try to come down when you need to. Nice. And uh, that's what I figured. And now we come out of this pose. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Meg went into child's pose. I highly recommend coming into child's pose after dolphin to to. I feel, wow, there's the, the, the opening like this of the shoulders gives those, gives the long space. <laughs> and then we come forward again to hands and knees. Reach right arm forward, left leg back and up. We're all in the category of, I think that's very available to squeeze your legs together that's the same bend your left knee reach back with your right hand and maybe you catch your foot now here comes for some of yeah for some of us it's like okay the kidney line just wants to shear forward okay that is perhaps what you're noticing is your tendency and of course our yoga invites us to witness our tendencies so we move navel to the back plane, then take the palate back and then maybe express pushing back through the left foot. Now keep your right arm lifted, left leg lifted as you come out of this into the bird dog, reaching right arm forward, left leg back. And then place uh, both all limbs down. <laughs> Come down into your elbows and forearm pose again into a forearm plank. And then once again, walk the feet forward to a dolphin pose. Waistline back, bottom to the shoulder blades, move forward. Walk around the back body to the front. Then step your feet back into the forearm plank. 
Lower everything down to the ground. Stretch your toes at the bottom. Reach your hands back in a full prone position. Exhaling tailbone roots, breathing in, lift and spread into the back, waist, and kidneys. Next breath in, lift the arms, legs, head, chest, and shoulders up into a shalabhasana. Yep, exactly. Breathe in, swim the arms forward. Exhale, swim the arms back. Breathing in, full kidneys, arms swim forward. Exhale, arms swim back. One more time. Breathing in. Exhale, kidneys lift as you come back. Lower all the way down. Place your hands under your shoulders. Press back to a quadruped position on the hands and the knees. Reach the right hand forward, left leg back into your bird dog. Different side. Different side. We're going to do a different side. <laughs> left hand forward, right leg back. <laughs> and then reach back and catch. Sarah's like, we're not doing this things that again, are we? No, we're not. We're not on the time today. Maybe another day. Okay. So as you exhale, notice tendencies. So we're not trying to move beyond this. We're trying to deeply arrive in the physical back body, moving waistline and palate into the back body. Good for you. Might feel like a dance, might feel like an argument. Try to make it feel more like a dance. Okay, so reaching forward again, taking a few breaths here in the straight line. But as we know, the straight line is full of curves and uh, movement and bringing your hands down, lower. Um, lower your whole body all the way down to the ground. Place your hands on either side of your shoulders. Bend your knees. Flex your feet. Hug your legs toward the middle. Breathe into your kidneys to keep that cobra upper body. So we call this kavakasana or pigeon. Right? Some people, their head touches their feet, they touch their head. Not necessarily, yeah, good kidney fullness. Beautiful, nice with the shoulders and the heart melting side. It's excellent. Max exhale, lengthen to lower down. So that's an option to do again. Another option. To the tops of the feet, unless that is so available, then you do that kapatasana type thing again. Breathe into the kidneys. Next exhale, palate rises, lifts, and push the feet back and up. That's it. Dhanarasana. Nice, nice expression. Little flames rising up to the toes there, Sarah. I where you get that. Flame on, so amazing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and as you exhale the next time, lower down and release. Let's go with another Dhanarasana. Um, bending knees. We're going to reach back and see if you can catch the ankles with flexed feet. Ankles with flexed feet. Yep. Hug legs to the gut together. Breathe into the back waist. Exhale, power rises, lifts. This one, the feet press back more than up. They go back behind you. Yeah, like that. So it's a little different. Shoulder blades and down the back, forward of the heart. And exhale to lower down. 
And then passively a few breaths here on your belly, feeling that the breath naturally spreads into the kidneys as you breathe in. When you're lying on your belly with this. Roll over to lie on your back. Lift your right leg up. You can use a strap or hands to the back of the thigh or even the right hand to the right toes. So great. And stretch and reach your left leg long on the floor. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in to the back waist. Exhaling, arms move energetically into shoulder sockets. So your palate can move back. So the loops are always present. It's just how much we um, bend with them or not bend with them. You can always tune into these cycles of energy that are moving on this front to back plane or the sagittal plane. And you might notice that keeps you a little more present in your back body, maybe a little more soft in your front body. Externally rotate your right leg, open your left arm to the left, and open your right leg to the right. Allow yourself to be in the current, the play of breath and inquiry into these currents from front to back, from back to front. Next, exhale, bring the uh, right leg up, bend the left leg, eye of the needle, place right ankle on left knee, lift left leg up. So the back body is <laughs> for me. It's it's a reminder. It's a practice. Like I, like I said, I'm always curious about how to how just be like the ultimate best person I can be, living into it in the here and the now. And as you feel into, as you move into the back body, you might feel more connected to um, that perfection that exists within the imperfection of humanness. And then place your left foot down to the floor and then cross your right leg across your left leg so there's no gap. Lift your hips up, bump your hips over to the right, set them down. And then the knees twist any amount over towards your left, reach your right arm out to the right, head can turn halfway to the right, if that's feeling good. Breathing here in this supine twist, allowing yourself to be fascinated with embodiment, how your back body is now like wrapping around to the front and how you can presence into this. And even be enchanted by your humanness. Let's exhale, bring your legs back to the center, knees toward the ceiling, bump your hips back to the middle, and then you unravel your legs, stretch your left leg up, right leg down. So we're going to sue to put in the second side. And we allow ourselves here in these last, you know, these last minutes of class to um, move from a pretty focused attention and focused awareness 
we're not like dropping out, but you're allowing yourself to move toward um, what some psychologists call fascination, letting your mind go where it feels pulled to, like when you're in a hike and you're like, oh, look at that cloud and that bird, and allow yourself to be in fascination. So we're letting the focused awareness soften the rest of it. Like turning down the dial, not just dropping out. Open your left leg to the left, open your right arm to the right. The second version is Mujapanastasana. Breathing. Feeling where your <sighs> mind takes you with feeling where the ecstasy is. And yes, it is here and now in your body. Next exhale, the left leg comes up through the center, bend the right knee, left ankle to right knee, eye of the needle shape. Moving in to back body. There's so much to be felt, and it's ongoing from what I understand our ability to interoceptive to feel inside it doesn't have a known endpoint. You can also how to measure it. I don't know. But as far as I can tell, the when you train your ability to intercept, feel inside, it's which is different than extraception using your senses, which is different than proprioception, which is feeling where you are in space, where your limbs are, where you are in relation to ground and sky. They can, of course, all be trained and enhanced through practice. And since we get this human life, then wow, why not? Okay, release legs, crisscross legs, no gap between the legs. From your hips up and over to the left, draw your knees to the right. The supine twist. So the back body represents the less obvious, the essence of sorrow, the heart of all, the Kudaya, the divinity that's always present in you as you look right here, right now. And next exhale, bring your knees back up through center, uh, bump your hips back through center, release your legs down. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, lift head, chest, and shoulders, bend the knees, lift the feet up, hold onto the back of the thighs, back of the thighs, push the thighs into the hands to curl up through the uh, chest a little bit more, that's it. And now you're gonna release your right leg long, hovering along the floor, a couple of, above the floor, a couple of inches. Reach your right arm alongside your right leg. Draw the right leg in and left leg reaches long. Yeah, it's a little abdominals. I see I'm sneaking it in. <laughs> And then reach your right leg to meet your left leg, a little pipe from the vasana. 
and lower all the way down. Let it go, let it be. to letting everything be as it is right now. Perhaps just curious about the possibility of letting everything go. Maybe right now you just let it all go. Now allow and call in awareness to the back body, allowing awareness to congeal, coalesce, and sense tangible body in contact with ground. Feeling the emergence of your front body as awareness starts to go there. And feeling your breath. Inviting your breath to deepen. Stir as you wish. And one or both knees to roll to the side, pausing for a few moments, just taking some breaths. yourself up to a comfortable seat. Where we together practice sense of reverence and humility for the practices, for the lineages, for the teachers, for the spaces. 
feeling that as you perhaps slide your waistline back or maybe even just lift your back ribs a little bit, that there is this bowing, this, this humility and reverence for not only these practices, but for this extraordinary opportunity to witness your perfection within the possible imperfection of humanness, your transcendent nature within this moment as you are right now. Many blessings. Namaste. Thanks, Nisha. Thank you as well. <laughs>